there's a misconception that you need to see the spirit realm to interact with it. On an unconscious level, you interact with it every day. When you encounter that world, you discover there are beings, names, powers, keys, territories, postures, languages, dignitaries, their laws. Every activity you do strikes a chord in time, but there are activities linked to your call that strike a chord in eternity. From the books of old and the new, the throne room of God and the divine secrets of the spirit, higher dimensions, near-death experiences, the spiritual realm, dreams and visions, plus much more. The RDM podcast explores it all and awakens you to secrets and deeper realms. And now, here's your host, Rabbi Daniel Malinga. Hello everybody and welcome to the first ever RDM episode. I'm your host, Daniel Malinga. I'm not alone in the studio. With me, I have an audience. Audience, say hello. Hello. Hey guys, how you doing? Now, the purpose of the audience is to help me read out some scriptures. And towards the end of the episode, they're going to be asking some questions as well. Now, we're going to be diving into some serious stuff. Stuff that I'm excited to get into. Um, we have a format for this podcast. We're going to be doing a series format. What that means is that what we don't finish in this episode, we're going to touch in the next episode. Our first topic for this first ever episode is understanding the spirit realm. I'll say it again, understanding the spirit realm. And the reason why we've chosen this particular topic is because every other episode from here onwards will be based on the foundation of this particular topic. So I hope you're as excited as I am. Let's get it on. I'm going to be answering three major questions, although I'm almost certain we won't be able to touch all of them. The first question is, what is the spirit realm? Make no mistake, as simple as the question sounds, we're going to be going into some interesting stuff. Yeah? The second question is, how real is the spirit realm? The third question is, what is the structure and the order of the spirit realm? Now, I'm going to ask uh, the people that are with me, I'm going to ask my friend Eric to read for me two scriptures, Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 2. Reading from the NIV version, Genesis 1 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. 2 Corinthians 12 2, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven, whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Thank you, Eric. Now, here's an interesting thing. Let's start with the first scripture. Genesis 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning God created the heavens, plural. The Hebrew word there is shamaim, more than one heaven. The second scripture that he read is attached to that first scripture. It helps us understand it. Paul says he was taken to the third heaven. Now, it's important we understand that when Paul says he was taken to the third heaven, it could be one of two things. The first one is that there is three heavens. The second one is that there is an implication that there, that Paul was taken to the third heaven, but there is more than three heavens. That's what we can get from that scripture. So it says that God created the heavens, plural, and the earth. Now, in order to understand the spiritual realm, I'm not going to define it. I'm not a fan of definitions because I always feel like definitions uh, never truly give the extent of what a thing is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe the spirit realm and we're going to go deep into it. And as I do so, I'm going to ask you, close your eyes if you're do, if you if you're listening in. I don't know where you are, if you're at a hotel, if you're seated somewhere, if you're on your bed. Close your eyes and allow your imagery, the imagery to take you away so that you, by the time we're through with this episode, you would have a clear understanding, not from a definition point, but from 
a, 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 a visionary point of what the spiritual realm is. To describe the spiritual realm, I'm going to use the natural realm to explain the spiritual. There is one natural realm. One. That natural realm is what God created or brought into existence along with the spiritual realm. Contrary to common belief, the natural realm is not just the earth. The earth is within the natural realm, but the natural realm also includes the planets in our solar system, the stars, the moon, the sun, the universe itself falls within the confines of the natural realm. When we call something natural, it means that our five senses can perceive it. Our five natural senses can perceive it. If, if you, if you, Interested in history like I am, you know that in the past, they sent men beyond the atmosphere of our earth onto the moon. Men landed there, they touched the ground, walked on it. So by understanding, the moon itself must fall within the confines of the natural realm because natural men landed on the moon. All right? So the same is true about the sun. No one has gone to the sun, but we can see it from where we are. And the fact that our natural eyes can see the sun implies that the sun falls within the natural realm. So there is one natural realm, and within that natural realm, there are various geographical locations. So the earth is a location. Jupiter, Mars, and other planets are locations. The sun is a location. And other stars are locations within the natural realm. Now, in the same way, there is one spiritual realm with various geographical locations. I'll say it again. In the same way, there is one spiritual realm with, that, with various regional or geographical locations. Now, it's important you understand that when it comes to the spiritual realm, there are parts of the spiritual realm that are directly linked to natural locations on earth. And I'm going to explain that. For example, the planet earth is a geographical location in the natural realm. There is a spirit realm attached to the natural earth. In other words, the earth has its own spiritual atmosphere. You can call it a spiritual world. That atmosphere has its own inhabitants, its own uh, contents, its own laws. And I'm going to use scripture to describe it and explain that. Jupiter is another geographical location in the natural realm. But it also has its own spiritual atmosphere. It has its own spiritual world. That means if you went to Jupiter, on a physical plane, probably you would find nothing. But from the spiritual perspective, it does not mean that Jupiter is empty. The same is true about other planets, other stars, even the sun. And I'm going to touch this. Now, remember I said that the earth has its own spiritual atmosphere. And it has, that spiritual atmosphere has its own spiritual inhabitants. It has its own contents and it has its own laws. It's important you hear me carefully. According to the Bible, there are, and I, I like to label them this way, there are specific laws that are tied to particular geographical locations. And there are universal laws that, are, that cut across no matter where you are in the universe or where you are in the spirit realm. There are laws that cut across. They're called universal laws. So, for example, the scripture says, and I'm just going to quote this, um, scripture says that as long as the earth endures, that's Genesis chapter 8, seed time and harvest, summer and winter, cold and heat, and so on, shall not depart from the face of the earth. That is a specific law tied to the planet earth. So if you went to Jupiter, there's no summer and winter. Okay? That is a specific law tied to the earth. 
However, there are universal laws. A universal law, for example, in scripture is whatever you sow, you shall reap. No matter where you are in the universe, no matter where you are in the spirit realm, that law applies to you. If you look through scripture, Lucifer tried to usurp the throne of God and he was brought down. He sowed something and he reaped it. And from what we know, that activity, according to Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah chapter 14, happened in the spirit realm. So he reaped what he sowed. All right. So having got that understanding, you, you begin to know that there are physical geographical locations that fall within the natural realm, like I've said, and they each have their spiritual worlds. Now, it's important you understand that the spirit world is vast, extremely vast. When I say the spirit world is vast, I'm not just talking about geography and size. I'm talking about the spirit world being vast, first of all, in terms of inhabitants. Secondly, in terms of dimensions. And thirdly, in terms of order. I'll say those three things again. First, in, time, in terms of inhabitants. Second, in terms of dimensions. And third, in terms of order. Let me highlight a few of these things because as we go on with other episodes, we're going to explain them. The spirit realm is vast in terms of inhabitants. There are inhabitants that you know of. Of course, there, there's God himself. There is, There are spirits both angelic and demonic, you already know that. But there are also spirits of men. Now, the spirits of men are two kinds. In the spirit realm, there are human spirits, spirits of men who once lived on the face of this earth, died and left. Okay? Then there are also spirits of people who still walk this earth but are very active in the spirit realm. Very, very active in the spirit realm. If someone out there is doubting what I'm saying, then think about it. If you read the book of John, the Bible says that Jesus said he is the only begotten son in the bosom of the father. Now he's saying that while he's currently on earth, but he's also in the, bo- in the bosom of the father. The Bible says that uh, While you're here on earth, you're concurrently, actually not concurrently, simultaneously seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that means that 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 um, there are spirits of human beings, but the difference between some of you and the rest that actually know what they're doing is that they know how to be active in the spirit realm. So the spirit realm is vast in terms of inhabitants. Secondly, it is vast in terms of dimensions. Oh, this is a deep one. Because there are higher dimensions, there are lower dimensions, there are parallel dimensions. Someone thinks I'm, someone, someone thinks I'm just talking new age. Eh? I'm going to prove all this through scripture. And there are what I call multiple timelines. Hmm. Hmm. According to scripture, when God created the earth, God being the chief, the highest of the highest, God the creator of all things, he released a royal decree. And that decree is in Psalms 115. I'm going to ask you to read it for me. Psalms 115 verse 16. Psalms 115, 15. May 16. You be, 15, right? May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And verse 16. I want verse 16. Verse 16 says this. It says, the highest heavens belong to the Lord. But the earth has he given to the children of men. That is a royal decree by God himself. Now what that means is that when God created the earth, he quote unquote exiled himself from this realm. And the only way that spirits, including God, can be active in the realm of men is if men accept God in through this realm. Okay? So all these things, healing, uh, uh, things to do with demonic activity, all that, trust me, divine or demonic, 
it is impossible for anything spirit to be active on this earth without a man accepting. So, Psalms 115.16 is a royal decree by God himself. This realm is your realm. Now, I talked about multiple dimensions, higher dimensions. I talked about parallel dimensions. Now, <laughs> listen to me, child of God. If you are a Christian and you don't believe in multiple dimensions, you should reread your Bible. If you're a Christian out there and you're listening to me right now, you do not believe in multiple dimensions. You should reread your Bible. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, it says, By faith we understand, verse 3, that the worlds were framed by God's word. Worlds, plural, not one world. Worlds. That is a reference to dimensions, more than one. First Kings chapter 8, verse 27. I'm going to ask Eric to read it out for me. First Kings 8, 27. But will God really dwell on the earth? The heavens, even the highest heaven, cannot contain you. How much less this temple I have built? Okay. Now, this scripture is interesting. It's so, it says, Behold, the heavens and the highest heavens cannot contain thee. That scripture is in reference to God. So, in terms of the statement that there are multiple dimensions, let me ask you a question. Based on this scripture, when God created the heavens and the earth in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, where was he? Ask yourself that question. When God created the heavens and the earth, and the heavens are the spiritual realm, where was he? You cannot be inside something you're creating. He had to be in another dimension that I actually, when we touch later on, I'll explain. It is actually the God dimension. The dimension that only God and anyone who has God in them can enter. <laughs> you see, there's a scripture that said, I love, I'm, I'm going to explain it because I believe that there's a dimension that God had. It's a God dimension. It's separate from what God created. It's an uncreated realm linked to God. You see, Moses wrote Psalms 90 and Moses said something. I think he got this revelation. He said, from, re from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Moses said that. Isaiah, who is a prophet, taps into something similar to Moses. In Isaiah 57, he says, he says, For thou alone, O God, inhabit eternity. Scripture says it. It says, Thou alone inhabit eternity. Now, this is this is this is crazy. When I was reading this and I studied this over time, I began to realize that if God alone inhabits eternity, that means number one, when we were created, we as human beings are linked to the realm of time. But when you enter the spirit realm, that realm is not absent of time per se. It just has a different kind of time. The book of Revelations, interestingly, uh, it says it. It says that there was silence in heaven. John is taken up and he says there was silence in heaven for half an hour, 30 minutes. If there was no time in the spirit realm, how could there have been silence in heaven for half an hour? Now, this is interesting. So my understanding of this is there is a time in the spirit realm that is confined but is different from the time that we have on earth. Time in its true sense doesn't apply to God because God abides in what we call timelessness. Even the devil himself, according to scripture, is confined to time. You read scripture, the Bible says he knows that his time is short. He's a spirit. So that means time is applying to the devil. <laughs> uh, this is interesting. All right. So that means that these beings, these spirits, they have a time in and all, in that, that there is a time that they are confined to that is different from ours, but still it confines them. God is not just higher. He's in a whole different category. He can't be compared to anyone else. 
if you ever have a chance, if just, just read the book of Revelations, or I've talked with people with experiences, I've had experiences myself. If you have a chance to be, behold God sitting on the throne, what captures most people's hearts, or even if you read just the book of Revelation, what captured John's heart was the fact that what he beheld was something or someone, a being that was uncreated. The only one uncreated, like Moses said, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. So there is a God dimension and there are, there are other dimensions within. Read for me Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. Eric. Second Timothy 1 9. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. This scripture is interesting because it says that grace was given to us before the foundations of the earth, before the beginning of time. When did time begin? Time began in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning, God. But this scripture says that grace was given to us before time. Now, this is powerful. What it implies is that there are things that God did before time began. And like I said, time applies not only to men, but there's a different time that applies to spirits. Now, this is the reason why the devil, according to uh, the book of Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 2, it says, I think it's verse 8, it says, had they known the princes of this world would not have crucified the Lord of glory. That means the devil, no matter how ancient he is, there is stuff that he did not know. Why did he not know that stuff? Because God decided or concluded on that stuff long before the enemy was created as Lucifer. You understand? And as created beings, you can only know something from the point when you came into existence. <laughs> you can't know something before you existed. Unless a person who was there before you tells you. And this is why the devil is fighting a losing battle. <laughs> and the most amazing thing is that when God created us, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, the wise man speaks and says, he has put eternity in the hearts of men. Ecclesiastes 3.11. I think it's 3.11. Powerful scripture. He has put eternity in the hearts of men. The reason why you are able to comprehend the mind of God the reason why human beings are obsessed with the future or they're obsessed with eternity is because they have eternity deep within them. So the spirit realm has multiple dimensions. And I've just explained, I've taken, I've labored to explain to you that there is a God dimension that only someone connected to God can tap into. How do you think Moses, Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible? How do you think he wrote that? He wasn't there when God was creating the universe in Genesis 1 and 2. And one day I'm going to touch this because I actually know from my studies that the experiences that Moses writes down in Genesis 1, 2, and 3 are revelations and experiences that he got from God when he went up that mountain, Mount Sinai, and was there for 40 days and 40 nights. I'm going to teach on that. He went up there. He had experiences in there, and I believe from those experiences is where he wrote the, 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 the book of Genesis, and especially the first three chapters, first four, five chapters. Okay? So, a man who was three-dimensional tapped into something before his time because he's connected to God, the God dimension. Okay? All right. I, I feel this is interesting. I'm going to go. I want to go a bit. Audience, should I go a bit deeper? Go on, go on, go. Let's go deeper. <laughs> I know you're preparing for me some questions there. <laughs> of course, let's go. Let's go deeper. All right. Uh, I said, I said the spirit realm is vast in terms of inhabitants. I've explained that. I said it's vast in terms of dimensions, and I said there are higher dimensions, there are lower dimensions, there are parallel dimensions. Like I've tried my very best to explain. Um, let me let me give you an imagery. Imagine a building. 
a corporate building. Start from the cellar and go upwards until you reach the very top of that building. At every level, as you move upwards, you find different types of employees. All right? With different levels of authority and different types of knowledge. As you go upwards, you get higher knowledge, higher authority until you reach the very top. That is how the spirit realm is when it comes to God. The Bible refers to him as the most high. All right? So he's at the very top. And the reason why he's the most high is the, he has, he's omniscient in the sense that being at the very top, he knows all things. All right? So I've given you that imagery so that you can understand how the structure works. All right? Now, each of those dimensions, the higher you go, and I'm going to touch this, the higher you go, there are barriers. If you do not qualify to be on the next level, you will not, you will not be able to tap into it. Now, I, I, I have to explain something. Jesus, who is the son of God, existed with God from the very beginning. And God being the most high existed with Christ. The Bible says in the beginning that was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. So Christ was there from the very beginning. God was in the beginning. He is the most high. He lives or abides in the highest dimension, the God dimension. Now I want you to imagine. Christ comes down to the lowest dimension. Our three-dimensional world. All right? God becomes three-dimensional. God who's dimensionless <laughs> becomes three-dimensional. He dies on the cross and then the Bible says he resurrects and is seated at the right hand of the Father. But then it says you're seated there as well. So that means that when Christ resurrected, you overtook a number of dimensions and sat at the very highest dimension where God abides. That means any man who is born again, tapping into spiritual things through Christ Jesus, there are, you should be able to bypass these barriers if you're serious with spiritual things. In true sense, we are the limitations to ourselves. Now, <laughs> I'm not going to be babying you. We're not giving spiritual milk. Okay? This is hardcore meat, but I'm enjoying it. All right? There are also, what I believe, multiple timelines in the spiritual realm. Multiple timelines. Now, this sounds like science, and indeed it is because science um, finds its root originally in God. All knowledge comes from the spirit realm. I believe the multiple timelines. I've sat down to try to read the Bible and studied it, and one day, in its true extent, I'll be able to release something about this. But let me give you a few highlights. There are multiple timelines, just like there are in movies. Eh? <laughs> I believe there are multiple timelines. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 31, God says, uh, I place before you a choice between life and death. God's blessings and God's curse. And I call upon heaven and earth to witness the choice that you make. Then he says, choose life. Children of God, I'm going to give you this. I believe from scripture that when God places a choice before you of life and death, he has already factored in all the extents of the results or the effects of the choice that you will make. In other words, before you make the choice, there are in essence two timelines. When you make the choice of either life or death, one timeline disappears. <laughs> Actually, this is the essence, this is the truth behind um, uh, uh, it's, it's actually the truth behind predestination. Most people don't understand predestination. Predestination simply means, um, first of all, destination is a destiny, sorry, is different from fate. Fate, something is set in stone. You can't do anything about it. Destiny is chosen. 
Okay? That means you have a choice. Now, God factors in our free will and allows us to choose. Predestination, what, what predestination actually means is that for whatever choice you're going to make, God himself has already factored in all the effects of the choice. The Bible says he sees the end from the beginning, or he sees the beginning from the end. You understand? So he has already factored it in. That's why in the scripture I read, Deuteronomy 31, it says, I place before you a choice between life and, I, and death, God's blessings and curses, and I call upon heaven and earth to witness the choice that you make. Heaven witnesses the choice that you make. The moment you make it, its results and its effects have been seen. There's no man who will stand before God on the final day and say something happened to them that is not linked to a choice that they made. <laughs> okay? Now, you see, the thing is this. Eh? I'm going to, I'm going to, because I'm explaining the spirit realm, and I have to consider the fact that if I use language that people are not going to understand, they're going to get lost. So I have to break it down. We are three-dimensional beings. Three dimensions means this. Length, width, and depth. Those are the three dimensions of the realm that we're in. Length means a straight line. Okay? So, for example, if I, if I drew a straight line on a piece of paper, that is length. All right? Call that your x-axis. If I drew another line, okay, let's call that width or whatever, okay, or let's call that height, that would be your y-axis. That is two dimensions. The third dimension is depth in the sense that it, it takes into consideration your surface area, okay? All right, depth is what gives surface area. Now, there's something deep in scripture. In Ephesians 3.18, Paul is writing a powerful, powerful letter. And he says that you might be able to know the length, the width, the height, and the depth. He does four dimensions. He puts there four dimensions, not three. He says that you might be able to know the length, the width, the height, and the depth of God's love. Now, Remember I said we're three-dimensional beings, but that's not how God created us. We're not supposed to be three-dimensional. If you go to Genesis chapter 1, actually chapter 2, after God has created man, and chapter 3, Adam walks with God. If God lives in another dimension, and Adam is three-dimensional, how can he relate with a God from another dimension unless he has the capacity to be more than three-dimensional? You getting what I'm saying? Okay. So, length, width, depth. Paul height adds another one, height. Their height. <laughs> now, the interesting thing is that, according to science, there was a man called Einstein. And I like to study this stuff. Einstein came up with what they call the theory of relativity. In the theory of relativity, he, he acknowledged that there are three dimensions. Okay, that I've mentioned. But then, according to his theory, he declared that there was a fourth dimension that he called the time dimension. In other words, according to him, time was the fourth dimension. Now, if we are three-dimensional beings and we live in the realm of time, why don't we say we are four-dimensional? Why do we emphasize? Why am I emphasizing that we're three-dimensional beings with a capacity to operate beyond three dimensions? The reason is, if time is the fourth dimension, according to Einstein, we only truly utilize a third of that time dimension because time has past, present, and future. <laughs> and we, our bodies, we only live in the present. So we can't fully call ourselves four-dimensional in terms of the definition of Einstein. We are, in fact, three-dimensional beings with a capacity to tap into other things. Now, here's the thing. Whenever you go beyond the fourth dimension of time, according to science, you've entered the spirit world. 
<laughs> when you go beyond the fourth dimension of time, you have entered the spirit world. You have tapped into things that do not fall within the confines of, of man. You have tapped into another world. Now, anyone who knows how to connect to the timelessness, timelessness of God and to the fact that the spirit world is not confined to our kind of time can learn how to manipulate this time realm. I'll say it again. If you live beyond this dimension, the fourth dimension of time, if you live beyond the three dimensions plus time, you can tap into the capacity to manipulate time. Let me use the Bible, because I know there's someone out there probably saying, uh, where, is, where are these things in Scripture? Let's, let's, let, let me use Scripture. Joshua was able to stop the sun. That is stopping time. And he had a connection to the God dimension, a connection to God, timelessness, and he stops time. The Bible says that Hezekiah, his shadow went backwards. That is the reversing of time. Are you with me? Read for me. Uh, oh God. Numbers chapter 17. Verse Numbers 8. 17, 8. Numbers mm -hmm. 17, 8. The next day, Moses entered the tent and saw that Aaron's staff which represented the tribe of Levi, had not only sprouted, but had budded, blossomed and produced almonds. All right. Now, this is very, very interesting because I've given you an example where time stopped in the Bible. I've given you an example where time was reversed in the Bible. I'm going to give you an example where time was, was quickened in the Bible. Here, Aaron's rod is put in a box with other rods and scripture says the next day, they found that it had budded with almonds. Now, just do your study. Go Google. It takes one year for an, alba, an almond to bud. One year. Time is shortened. In that box to one day until it begins to bud. Anyone who has a connection to the godless realm, I mean to the, to the, to the God realm, has the capacity to manipulate time. That means... <laughs> You don't have to grow old. Eh. People say, now what is this that is going on? The Bible says of Moses that at 120 years old, he still had his strength and he could see clearly. Okay? There are certain laws that apply to the earth. When someone taps into the spirit world, they, especially in line with the word of God through Christ Jesus, anyone tapping into the spirit world, certain laws are suspended like age. Eh? I'm thinking told my time is running out. So I want to, I want to, I really want to exhaust this as much as I can. Um, let me explain something. I, I am a fan of movies, but specific kind of movies. There are movies I love that have to focus, that focus on the unknown. I love movies to do with space, movies to do with underwater discoveries, movies to do with, uh, with time travel. My favorite movies. There is a movie I watch called Interstellar that piqued my interest. Very interesting movie. Now, that movie, um, well, the star of the movie is Matthew McConaughey. And uh, uh, that movie is hinged on the premise of Einstein's theory of special relativity, which says this. Now, people are saying physics, the man of God has brought us physics. Yes. <laughs> you say this, which says this, eh? that if an object moves very fast up to the speed of light, okay? If you move an object so fast up to the point of the speed of light, that object, the faster it goes and the farther it goes, time begins to slow down to that object. In other words, so I want you to imagine, say you are the flash. The faster you run, things around you begin to slow down. That is Einstein's theory of special relativity. In other words, you move, if you are to go to space, you go by the speed of light to reach a particular planet. The faster you go, the farther you go, the slower time uh, uh, impacts itself on you. So what is five minutes to you? I'm giving an example. When you came back, you'd be shocked to find that a year has passed. 
And this theory has been proven because when they send out astronauts, when they send out astronauts, the farther they go into space, the farther away they go, there's a time lag. So let me give you an example. Say an astronaut has a twin here on Earth, and that astronaut leaves the Earth and heads to the moon. No matter how long he spends there, they found out that when he comes back, he's younger than his twin. <laughs> oh my God. Time slows down. Now, why am I bringing this up? Remember I said that when you move at the speed of light, time slows down. The Bible says that God surrounds himself in unapproachable light. Are you with me? That's why scripture says one day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years like one day to God. Because he abides in light and in that realm, the realm that he's in, it's timeless. <laughs> oh my God. So imagine yourself, you're about, to, you're, in a, you're about to involve yourself in a car crash. Just before, just before your car smashes into another car. You cry out, God help me. For you, it's a millisecond. But God, he can take eternity to answer your prayer and still be on time. People are laughing. <laughs> this is a serious stuff. And imagine... I haven't even got to the second question of, of how real is the spirit realm. I'm still describing the spirit realm. I tell you there are dimensions out there. Jesus was multidimensional. He was not one-dimensional. He was not three-dimensional. He was multidimensional. Let me use scripture to, to explain it. Jesus had the capacity to appear and disappear, but still be physical. That is operating on different dimensions. Then the Bible says that he had the capacity to foresee the future. That's another dimension altogether. Then scripture says, like the, the scripture I gave earlier, the Bible says, he says, I am the only begotten son in the bosom of the father. So he's, that's what you call parallel dimensions. He's on earth, but at the same time in the spirit realm. We are parallel beings. The Bible says that where two or more are, there shall I be amongst them. Hold on. He's saying two or more are meeting, but he's amongst them. He's attending, he's present, but from a different dimension altogether. But still present, even though you can't see him. I was reading through a scripture that messed me up. The disciples are praying in a room. Jesus has died, he has resurrected. The Bible says, and he, he, he appeared in the room. Some people say he walked through the door. I want to submit something to you. When we say Jesus walked through the door to enter the room, he wasn't on the other side of the door and then walked through it. He came from another dimension through the door. Eh, you guys. <laughs> Jesus was multi- Dimensional and explaining to you the spirit realm and how it works. So, here's, and we're going to touch this uh, when we go further in the next episodes. But I want to wind this up. Eh? Um, when you read the Bible, remember I said we are more than three dimensions. When you read your Bible, there are people who read the, the Bible in a one dimensional way, length. So, from beginning, to the end. That's how people read the Bible. And when you read the Bible in a one-dimensional way, you have a one-dimensional view of God. If you add width, depth, and height, which is spirit, your dimension of God begins to, to grow, the way you see things. Now, if I drew a line on a piece of paper, that's one-dimensional. If you looked at it, it would only hold your concentration for a few seconds because it's boring. It's just one line. If I drew a two-dimensional figure, it would hold your attention longer than the one dimension. Why? Because it's a bit more interesting. If I introduced a picture, all right, the picture has three-dimensional beings in it. It would hold your concentration much longer than the two-dimension and the one-dimension. If I introduced a video, 
has introduced the element of time, which holds your concentration much longer than the three-dimensional picture, the two-dimensional drawing, and the one-dimensional line. My point is this. Some of you find the Bible boring because you're one-dimensional. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. You are one-dimensional. Lastly, I'll say this. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9 to 11. Read it for me. Ephesians 3, 9 to 11. And to make plain to everyone the demonstration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. Okay. Thank you. Now, this scripture, or these scriptures seem to imply to us that God has a manifold wisdom. He has a multidimensional wisdom. Okay? That's what it says. What that means is that if you grow in certain levels of your walk with God, you begin to see certain dimensions of him that other people have not yet seen. And this is what separates ministers of God. This is what separates them. There are people who tap into other dimensions of the wisdom of God. This thing is not, it's not automatic. I'm telling you, there are dimensions in the spirit realm. The Bible says that Enoch walked with God and was no more. A man traveled from one dimension to the other. Just like that. There is more to this world than you see. There's more to this world than you feel, more than the five senses. If you dug, right now, if you dug all the way to the core of the earth, all right, you'd find molten lava and magma, heat. From the physical perspective, there would be nothing there except that. But biblically, there is a spiritual world down there where people are suffering. <laughs> that means if your spiritual senses are opened, there is a world down there. Do you know, I was explaining to a few people here that, um, um, remember at the beginning I said that I found out that Many worlds in the spirit are directly linked to natural worlds. In other words, there are regions in the spirit realm that will exist only as long as the natural one exists. So, um, for example, uh, and I, I, I gave an example how Jupiter has its own world and it has its own inhabitants and it has its own people. And I explained that. Eh? And so you begin to realize that um, uh, if you look through history, People worshipped the sea. People worshipped the sun. People worshipped the moon. People worshipped various things. It is impossible uh, for people to just wake up and just worship something. Um, everything always has its origin in the spirit realm. So I believe every religion, every false religion on the face of this earth, every other religion, um, uh, had its essence. There's a spirit that appeared, just like how God appeared to Abraham. Okay? In relation to other religions, as long as they've survived time, they've been here for a while, there's a spirit that introduced itself to someone who began this thing. Now, let me tell you without a shadow of a doubt that back in the days when people worshipped, uh, the Egyptians worshipped the sun, okay? Uh, they also worshipped uh, Poseidon, the god of the sea. The Greeks had their own gods. Each one of those gods, a spirit must have introduced that to someone who then made it a God. And that spirit that introduced now, it, this is very hard to um, explain, but I'm going to try to break it down. When a spirit introduces itself, a demonic spirit introduces itself as a God, when it's trying to present itself as a God, it ushers you into worshipping its abode, where it lives. So a spirit that says, worship the sea, abides there. That's its home. A spirit that says, uh, worship a tree abides there. Somewhere, that's his home, though the spiritual version of it. So if you went underwater, say the god Poseidon is a spirit, a demonic spirit that the Greeks worshipped. Today he has different names. But the god Poseidon, if you went underwater, from a physical perspective, apart from archaeological sites and so on, you wouldn't physically see beings there. 
but i tell you even biblically we will touch it some other time but biblically there are cities down there there are cities down there the the the, the tale of atlantis did not just come out of nowhere all right so poseidon introduces himself as a god of the sea because that's where he abides now in the same way the egyptians worshiped the sun worshiped the moon because the spirits that introduced themselves to these people that is where they abide so when someone is worshiping the sun um there is a spiritual world linked to the natural sun that you do not see scientists are fighting so hard to ensure that they go to mars i can assure you they will find nothing on the physical perspective take their prophet <laughs> take their someone whose eyes have been opened you see something totally different now i really have to rush into this uh I have to explain to you um there's a misconception I'm going to call it a misconception uh, you don't really enter the spirit realm as a christian because you're not just three dimensional um the bible says you live in the spirit why not walk in the spirit as well or walk ye also in the spirit you live in the spirit you are a spiritual being right now there's a part of you that is well aware of the spiritual world So technically yes you enter it but you also don't enter the spirit realm <laughs> you're there now what you actually do is become more conscious and that consciousness awakens you to what is around you so for example let's say this is just an example you're kidnapped and taken to a hotel room where you are blindfolded you don't know where you are they open the blindfold and your first reaction is that i'm in a room that's stage 1 but you don't know where you are where that room is so you look out the window and see writing in chinese so you think okay maybe i'm in china okay your knowledge your consciousness has just increased then you look closer perhaps some of the buildings have the name of the city all those you, you haven't moved location you've been in one place but your level of consciousness has increased that's how the spirit realm is that's how it is you can actually be in one place and as your consciousness increases you tap into what is spirit you realize what is around you that's why in the things of the spirit there is no distance <laughs> that is why there is no distance that is why uh we shall touch it sometime but there is no speech the true essence of words was not for communication but creation and you'll be shocked that um people who have learned that secret speak less because they know that a lot of what is in their world is because of what they've been saying now i'm going to ask uh, uh, people in my audience to ask a few questions i hope they won't uh, uh put me on the spot but uh go ahead let's see what you got uh, first of all thank you rabbi for this I must just say every every time you kept speaking the deeper you went it actually brought me to that scripture that says <laughs> my people perish for lack of knowledge because that's every time you went deeper as like okay 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 and that's what led me to these questions okay I just have a couple of questions the first question is you mentioned that there is a god dimension and I have had four uh preachers men of god say the secret place of god So my question is this god dimension is this what they're referring to as the secret place of god and if so are there several secret places of god or just one secret place of god um i'm going to say it this way the bible says because you get that from from the scripture psalms chapter 90 i believe is it 91 uh it says he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the of the almighty it's called the secret place of the most high it's not your secret place okay mm. so the perception through scripture is that it's one place now mm. um from the little that i've read um throughout and the experiences that i've had i've found that the god dimension just like the spirit realm because you see um when we were teaching when i was teaching just earlier i was explaining that that uh, there are beings who abide in the spirit realm but god is not tied to it because he created it he lives in a god dimension all by himself mm. and so even that dimension itself itself is wider 
and bigger than you could ever imagine. That's why if you read through scripture, the Bible says in John 17 verse 3, it says to know God is eternal life. Eternity is not, is not long time because there's no time in the God realm. Mm. All right. Mm. Eternity, according to scripture, is the knowing of God. And that's what we're going to be doing for all eternity. So to answer your question, in essence, biblically, there is one secret place, which is, which is the secret place of the most high. But, um, it's not like if four, five, six, seven people go there, they'll all be able to just see themselves and say, Hey, there you are. I'm also in the secret place. Eh? Okay. N- not necessarily so. It's huge. I see. I see. Okay. And then my second question is, uh, from the story that you just shared, the hypothetical story of the kingdom. Mm. My question is, does that mean man is able to project his spirit to several places at the same time, but still be active in the physical. Okay, so for example, I'm seated in this room, I'm talking to you now, but I send my spirit out, say, five different ways. One to maybe Kampala, one to Jinja, one to five different places, but I'm still here talking to you physically. Is that what you meant, or can I perceive it that way? Okay, let me explain something. Um, first of all, just in case someone is out there shouting, new age. <laughs> um, let me explain something. Um, when God created us, the Bible says he breathed, he breathed into us the breath of life. So it, it came from God. We're the only beings on the face of the earth that have God in us, eh? a part of God in us, naturally, born again or not. All right? When you get born again, now you receive the Holy Spirit. All right? Now, um, the fact that you have God in you means that there are certain attributes of God that you're able to, uh, to have. The Bible says by the action from above or the Holy One, the action of the Holy One, you, you know all things. So just like God, you, you, you have a sense of omniscience. Mm. <laughs> okay? Mm. Huh? You have some semblance of omniscience. Uh, by the action of the Holy One, you know all things. Um, uh, even when it comes to, uh, if a person who is spiritual, like I said, distance does not exist. Mm. Okay? Mm. Um, uh, have you ever been, this happens a lot with, we call it intuition, it happens a lot with mothers. Um, when a child is far away and is struggling with something, the mother can feel it. That is not a physical connection. That is a spiritual connection from the beginning, from, from birth. A child has a connection with the mother. Okay, so there's no distance. Now, to answer your question, can you be in multiple places? I believe that uh, only God can be omnipresent. Okay? It's scriptural. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, but the Bible says, I say ye are God. So we are many <laughs> mm. Many gods, we have certain capacities, but we cannot be everywhere at the same time. But uh, scripture-wise, it's possible for you to be in one place. And I mean, go and study these monks and so on and so forth. They meditate and they are able to do things. Uh, uh, w- when we touch some future topics, I'm going to explain to you and show you people historically. There's a guy who had the capacity historically, and he was a Catholic priest who had the capacity to multiply himself. Now, whether it was demonic or divine is another thing altogether. It doesn't matter. He was a man. And because he was a man, that means there's a capability in men to multiply. Mm. Okay? Mm. All right. Now, have I answered your question? <laughs> yes, you have. Okay. And now I'm also waiting for those other episodes. Mm. <laughs> then I, I go on to my third question. You said uh, he has put eternity in the hearts of man. So my question is, does that mean, again, man can project his spirit mm. to the past past being even before he was born and then to the future, even after he is dead physically. Because in your explanation of eternity, that's what I picked up, past, present, and future. Okay. Um, I'm going to teach a topic one of these days, I promise, eh? on the mystery of time, because this is, this is a time thing. But let me explain something. The ability to go to the past or the future a child can only do by the Spirit of God, uh, not in your own right. If you look through Scripture, even the devil himself does not know the future. Only God knows the future. The Bible says he knows the, 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 the end from the beginning. Okay? So, even when it comes to, um, if you're talking about projecting your spirit to the future, projecting it to the past, and so on and so forth, you, 
there are barriers in the realm of the spirit. Like I said, if you do not cross them, there's certain things you're not capable of. And God cannot allow you to do certain things. You know, uh, can I touch this? You know, yes, we're going to, we're going to talk about time travel, but let me explain. I believe that in this realm, absent of connecting to the spirit of God, no matter how much men try to study other dimensions and try to find out if time travel, if time travel is possible, they won't be able to do it. Because imagine you're in a third dimension. You're in, you're in three dimensional world that we're in. And you're using three dimensional tools to try to understand a dimension that is above you. It's like trying to describe a box that you're in. You're trying to describe it from the outside, but you're inside it. And the only way you can describe that the outside of that box if it is if someone from outside opens it up or comes in and tells you what that box is like. Okay? So I believe in the natural realm, they're not going to be able to, to, to carry out time travel absent of the knowledge of Christ or connecting to the Spirit of God. The, the devil can't do it, no matter how much he tries. Because, you see, God, the Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Someone would say, can't you go back in the past and try to stop Jesus from dying on the cross? You see, God is in control of the past, present, and future. No matter what you say about time travel, you can't go back and change things because you'll find the same God there. I don't know <laughs> if you get what I'm saying. You will find the same God that is control that is controlling your present also in the future. So you just get frustrated. You find obstacles you do not understand. That's why I put it. So I believe there will be a limitation to time travel, um, absent of Christ. There are men, even biblically, who had the capacity to go to the past and the and the future, but they did it by the Spirit of God. There is not a single demonic person who could travel to the future. They could see, pick a few things, but they can't travel there. No, not possible. It's in the hands of God. Wow. My final question. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, the, the Bible says, greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. I just wanted you to expound on that in terms of dimensions. Mm -hmm. Okay, greater is he who is in us. And he who is in us is the one who has eternity mm -hmm. and has given eternity to us as well. And eternity goes in all the dimensions that you've mentioned. Mm. Does that mean that there is a limit to how far the devil can push? I know you just hinted on it now, yeah. but I just wanted you to expound on that. Yes, there's, there's, there's a, a limit. There are, there are barriers in the spirit. Eh? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There are barriers in the spirit. There are places, even from a biblical perspective, there are places that you cannot cross if you do not have the authority or if you don't, if you don't have the rank, there are places you cannot go into. You need to break into. So, for example, a man stands up and begins to prophesy the Oscars. Okay, it looks like it's no more prophecy, but it is not, because it's not just seeing the future; it's crossing dimensions. <laughs> you have to cross a barrier in the spirit, and if you, if you notice. You, you notice, for example, uh, uh, Prophet Elvis said it himself. He said, you need to cross certain barriers in the mm -hmm. spirit in order to do certain things. So I know there are people out there busy trying day and night, trying to see the Oscars. It, it, it <laughs> you need to develop a walk with God in order to do certain things. So yes, the devil is limited. The enemy is limited. Um, one thing you have over the enemy is this. The Bible says that, that um, these principalities, they learn wisdom from us. Because the Spirit of the Lord speaks through us. So they wait to hear, to see what we will say, do. Because they do not know what's next. You get what I'm saying? So the devil is limited to a specific dimensions. We, let me tell you. Because you are, remember what I said when I talked about the building? Mm. The higher you go, yes. the greater the authority. Yeah. And you're at the very top with Christ. Mm. That means every other dimension below you, if you tap into these things, if you get to know the Lord, if you, if you get to walk with him, there is no dimension below you that can limit you. Not even one. That's why as Christians, we're living far below our power. Far below. What is a witch doctor? What is a witch doctor? What is a psychic? Mm. Do you know the difference between a psychic and a prophet? A psychic can see the future but can't change it. <laughs> A prophet can. Authority. Amen.
Amen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I've, I've, I've done my very best to break down to you what the spirit realm is. Of course, there were other things, but we're going to be continuing this in the next episode where I'm going to be touching the reality of the spirit realm. And uh, possibly if we have time, we'll go into the structures of the spirit realm. I'm excited. I hope you've learned something. God bless you. Thank you for listening to the RDM Podcast. Join us next time to discover more secrets, dimensions, and depth. To find out more about Rabbi Daniel Malinga Ministries, please visit www.rabbidanielmalinga.com, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram at Rabbi Daniel Malinga.